Well, I had to step it up, I think, uh, you know, being with you with the pocket square and everything. It is impressive, sir, and lots to talk about for us. Yes. The big debut for Seth Meyers, late night, taking over for Jimmy Fallon and mm -hmm. that late night spot. What did you think about what we saw last night? Well, you know, I, I wasn't particularly surprised. I thought he was a little stiff. I thought the jokes weren't as strong as they could have been. But, you know, if, if you think back to when Jimmy Fallon took over that show, his first episode was a train wreck. He was nervous. He was jittery. It was just not funny. Uh, Conan O'Brien's first time on that show was not very good. These type of shows, they take a while to really find themselves. And I think we're not really going to have a great sense of what Seth Meyers' show is going to be, how he's going to you know, be as a host, until maybe six, eight months down the road. It's so true about finding your groove. It honestly did feel like an extended weekend update for a while. But as we can mm -hmm. see right there, had the star power uh, with Amy Poehler and Joe Biden and Fred Armisen, his band leader. Fred Armisen, the band leader. Yeah, an interesting talk. So a great idea. We'll keep our eyes on this one. Uh, interesting twist for Glee coming mm -hmm. to City and tonight uh, the season picks up season five. Yeah it's on a new night um, it was on Thursdays now it's on Tuesdays on a new network here in Canada we've got the hundredth episode coming up so it's if you're a Gleek it's a big time because it's been on a hiatus for a while and now it's coming back with a whole batch of new episodes. Five seasons in Brand, what is it about the show that keeps the viewers uh, glued to the, the TV? It's I think it's the combination of the music and the, um, the guest stars they've always got some big name guest stars. You never know who's going to be showing up. All right, so you can watch that on City Tonight. And then uh, this weekend, we've been talking about the Heritage Classic, but later on, the 86th Annual Academy Awards, and Ellen DeGeneres back as host. Yep, second time hosting. I think she's a good, safe choice. Um, the Oscars is a tough gig for anyone. I mean, we've seen very talented people, Jon Stewart, Chris Rock, who just did not do well as Oscars. You didn't like Jon Stewart? I actually like Jon Stewart as host. <laughs> I, you know, I, I just think he that's not his, his venue. And it's a really tough gig for anybody hosting it because the people there are nervous, they're all under scrutiny, everyone's on their best behavior. Yeah. It's not a, everyone says it's not a great room to play to. Play to. You know, Amy Poehler and Tina Fey were saying, we'll stick with the Golden Globes, and they yeah. do a great job hosting that one. And yeah, and year after year, it's just interesting to see each of these hosts take a cut at it because, like you say, it's a tough room to work. It is, and it's always going to be over long. I mean, you know, you always feel like you've been watching the thing for 18 hours by the time <laughs> it finally ends. True story, true story. Uh, see, Season two, this is great for a Canadian production. Yeah, you know, Canadian success story, season two of this uh, sitcom about a guy who was a sperm donor and suddenly discovers he's got all these kids and reconnects an instant family and, and back for the second season. Fun show. Now, how unique is this? I mean, given that this was produced on the Canadian side, I think the CW picked up interest in a show yes. like this. Uh, this is important for Canadian TV. It is, and it's, um, you know, American viewers are going to get to see it because, like as you say, they did pick it up, so the CW is going to be airing it in the summer and I think people can really see that you know that whole stigma of what you know American TV versus Canadian TV is sort of you know melting away and I think that the industry is really you know finding itself at this point. All right, we're cheering them on, and I guess final note here, I was surprised about the combination here, a Lindsay Lohan docu-series backed by Oprah. By Oprah. Well, you recall a while back, Oprah did that high-profile interview with Lindsay Lohan. Now, she got paid $2 million for that, and part of the deal was to do this docu-series, which is what yeah. Owen calls what a reality gonna learn show. Here? What are we going to learn here? <laughs> um, that Lindsay really needed $2 million, I think, is what we're going to learn. Um, it's, you know, Lindsay Lohan, fresh out of rehab, have. She's got paparazzi followers trying to stay on the straight and narrow, get her career back on track, and Oprah's filming it all, hopefully to get some ratings. Wow. Hopefully there's some value add in terms of a life class, because I'm sure Lindsay's learned a lot over the last little while. Brand, listen, thanks for coming in. Thank you, Rias. Keep rocking the bow tie. It looks good on you, sir. <laughs> TV Week, uh, great addition this week, uh, talking about the Oscars, too. Yep, Oscar issue. Just saw the cover. All right, taking a break. Top news stories coming your way next, including important traffic details for your morning commute.